my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. I appreciate everybody watching, liking, subscribing. I hope everybody's getting something out of this um, as far as information goes and everybody's, uh, you know, making gains where they can. Looks like uh, just you know, moving right into it right here. Uh, coin market cap, 256 billion. So then I went up from 234, 235 billion all the way back up. So, I mean, got the elephant walk. So, you know, one of the elephants here, all the elephants, put in their leg and now all of a sudden everything's going up dramatically and it, it's good to see you know we needed it to go back up sooner or later I'm, I'm just glad it didn't have to go all the way down to 3200 for bitcoin to do anything so as you can see the uh 24 hour changers now with uh you know such a huge spike 54 percent for 10x power ledger back up 35 percent uh, Monaco, you know, it's been up there for a while. Aeon's back up 22%. That's kind of back to baseline. Zero uh, X or O X, however you want to call it. Gollum coin. You know, just you know, everything is looking pretty good on the up and up here. There's a lot of double digits going on here as far as 24-hour uh, changers um, in the market. So that's good to see. Really, really good to see. So moving forward, I want to talk about these cold storage coins. So I finally got the uh, two cold storage coins. The Ethereum and Bitcoin one that I have for the uh, 100 subscriber giveaway uh, and 150 subscriber giveaway as well. Um, so please leave your Ethereum and Bitcoin address uh, below. Now, I could actually put the $20 uh, instead of you leaving your Ethereum address or Bitcoin address below. I could just put it on the coin itself. But I want you guys to actually put, put it on the coin if you want to put the $20 on your coin. This is something that is... Um, uh, considered a long-term thing uh, with these coins you know these coins have tangible value as well not just putting the money or you know the crypto on the actual coin uh, this Bitcoin is made out of copper but I'm gonna be getting a silver coin and uh, possibly a gold coin as well so you know when I'm done using this you know and I, I extract the cryptocurrency off of this cold storage coin um, it's still tangible it's still worth something and so it's not gonna be you know just lying around and it's trash now you know this is copper so copper's still worth money um but you know i'm gonna get a silver one as well and, and a gold one because i hold tangible assets as well um because it's just smart to do and to diversify your portfolio uh so moving forward so these are the cold storage coins like i was saying and i wanted to get into the use of these cold storage coins real quick and the reason why i'm pushing them so much is because these things are going to make things go mainstream as far as um, you know, people who don't understand the cryptocurrency world and so on and so forth. Everybody who understands the cryptocurrency world, we understand. You know, you get a Ledger Nano S, you get something on the store, but these are going to make it much, much easier. You know, to, to use. You know, we're using it with your phone and so on and so forth. And then when you're done with it, you can still have you still have tangible value with it. So that's that's kind of the the, the plus with these. Um, another thing is they're tamper resistant. Um, you know, uh, they're laser etched, laser de de designed, they're fire, water, you know, uh, flood proof. Uh, so longevity, you know, it, it, it's it's a great thing to have. Um, and you don't have to have a computer with you all the time. You can actually use your your wallet, your hot wallets. They, they uh, Cold Storage Coin app has their own app, but they can't ex extract the funds yet off the coin. So um, as far as you know, basically like a paper wallet, you know, or a cold or a offline wallet, you have to upload the private keys from there and they don't have that um, option yet. So you just get to use whatever uh, phone app wallet that you're using, a hot wallet, they call them. And uh, then you can use it from there, you know, until in the meantime. So right now they're only worth, they are worth about $20, $30 because they're copper. But the silver ones obviously are made of, of one ounce of silver. So that's uh I believe that's around like $17 right now for an ounce of, of silver. So add that to the cost of the actual thing. So you're probably looking at about 40, 50 bucks for a silver one and then moving up there from to gold. So, you know, these cold storage coins are great to have. I mean, it helps us store, protect and preserve our cryptocurrency. So when I put it on a silver coin, I'm just going to you know leave it somewhere. And then that's not only is it going to have cryptocurrency on it, hopefully gaining money on me. And it's going to be a silver coin. So when silver goes up, um, you know, it's worth, it's valuable to me at that point as well. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick with the cold storage coins. Um, and, and of course, my, uh, you know, subscriber giveaways. So please like, please subscribe. 
and uh, hit the bell and comment below if you guys are interested in the cold storage coins. Uh, another thing I wanted to touch on with cold storage coins, if I scroll it real work, is that they are actually looking for uh, interns right now to go to Thailand. And uh, they are you know, want you to apply um, and uh, you know, put a little three minute video in there. And this is who they, they need social media managers, videographers or video editors, and video, uh, graphic designers and artists and writers. So if you want to be a blogger and, and so on and so, you know, featured articles and so on and so forth, uh, this would be a good uh, starting point if you want to get into cryptocurrency. I'm actually thinking about it myself, but I got to get my, you know, um, ducks in a row before I can actually do anything of the sort. So moving forward from the cold storage coins, I wanted to get into EOS. Uh, I'm going to get into a couple things that, you know, I, I don't like. So you guys can kind of see, and it's not because I don't like it, it's based on facts and it's based on a feeling that I get. You know, I've been working, you know, I used to um, play the stock market for over three years, you know, I will say three to five years. And, you know, these things don't happen in, in the stock market. And I'll, and I'll explain what I'm talking about, but these things don't happen in the stock market because there's regulations against it. And we don't have this regulation and you wonder why big money doesn't want to come in when there's not enough regulation, unless they understand where this manipulation is and they've been and they've been privy to it. So, well, let's get into it a little bit here. So EOS, okay. So Block Dot One um, was creator, you know, EOS creator Block Dot One uh, announced it will be staking its its tokens to vote for the network's 21 block producers. Okay, so. As a recipient of 10% of the initial EOS token allocation, okay, Block.1 recognizes its responsibility to participate as an active minority voting member, okay? So when they had this, they had the activation period of the network, and Block1 had withheld their voting, okay, in part to encourage an organic, quote unquote, organic community led launch, okay? This is how they're trying to build their community. However, it had never stated that it would continue to withhold its vote once consensus had formed around a single main net. So now they have their main net out, and guess what? Block.1 is now coming back into the voting. And they have 10% of the EOS token allocation from the ICO. Okay? So that, of course, is its right as an EOS holder, of course. But no one knew that this was going to happen. Uh, and now it has 100 million tokens um, from the Genesis block. I mean, it, it's crazy. So, the, you know, critics are raising concerns about the letter of central level of centralization that this will create. OK, and, and it absolutely is creating a set level of centralization. And this really puts it on this. This um, article kind of puts everything in a nutshell that I've read um, all around. So not everything, but most um, that I think that is, is a big uh, concern that everybody should be looking at and saying, why is this a duck? OK, so that's why I always call EOS, you know, the quacking duck. Um, other things equal block down will control more than a quarter of the votes if it's elect if it elects to stake all of its tokens. That's significant in itself. But the picture becomes even more alarming when observing the current vote distribution among block producer candidates. So. Um, at present, the top block producer has 59.3 million votes. A single EOS can be used, vote up to 30 block producers, and they want to raise up to 50 possibly, meaning that barring a massive increase in user staking, Block.1 theoretically has the ability to use its token to single-handedly select with which block producers will verify transactions for the network. Okay, So block producers can freeze. OK, accounts. And then that's uh, kind of under the Constitution that they have, um, you know, recover stolen funds. Uh, and, and that's based, again, based under the governance and Constitution that they have. So granted, Block One has no financial incentive to act maliciously against its own network. And there is no reason to think that it would launch an you know, attack. However, critics point out that the level of centralization, OK, the centralization that they're saying, oh, you got to give up a little bit to get to get a little bit. It's going to create a single point of failure. And of course, the whole point of blockchain is to have no point of single resistance, a no point of centralization to be to be, you know, hacked or, you know, problems. So that's exactly what they're doing. And, you know, again, it, it's a duck. So I just want to, you know, point out everything. This is on CCN, Crypto Coin News. OK, 
And, uh, you know, before I even found this, I was reading a whole bunch of stuff that went into all of this stuff more uh, thoroughly. And this is just kind of an overview of everything. But I'm just I'm just saying it's a duck, you know, and even I mean, if you add all these things together. It's a duck. And then you have people, you know, like Brock Pierce, who started this and now he's trying to fade his, his name out like. I mean, the guy is just, he knows people. That's his whole thing. And he, and he, and he gets how they work. So, and, 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 and he's not doing the right thing towards it. So moving forward from EOS, okay? I wanted to get into Tether, okay? Real quick here about Tether of why I don't like Tether and why you shouldn't either, okay? Big news in, you know, going on around Tether and how it's be creating, you know, creating manipulation. And everyone goes like, oh, how is it creating manipulation? Okay, first off, they can just make more coins. Okay, when they make more coins, they're just going to back it with more dollars that they can print out of the press. It's as simple as that. Okay, so a couple things I want to touch on. Okay, a, spokes, a spokesperson for Bitfinex and Tether has said that the CEO of both firms is, you know, Han Lev Ludovicus Vanderveld. Okay, Van the Vanderveld guy. Okay, so I'm kind of looking through this and I'm going, okay, OmniLayer Protocol. Okay, it's backed by United States Dollar. They've kicked out their, you know, anything third-party auditors. They won't even do it. Um, and, and then I come to find out that originally Tether was was announced in 2014 as RealCoin co-founder Brock Pierce. Here we go again. EOS, Tether, and there's a reason why things are strike, striking a tune with me is bad. And then I come to find out Brock Pierce is behind all of it. He's behind EOS. He's behind Tether. And, and, and it's just crazy to see that he's even started it and now he's been faded out because um, it was a startup. And now the CEO, you know, Tether CEO, Reeve Collins announced the project of Tether in 2014. It's crazy to see this stuff. And when I see this, and I go, no wonder I don't like it. I didn't even know that Brock Pierce was even part of this from the beginning. And now I know why I don't even like it. So now going straight into more technical analysis about crypto uh about tether and cryptocurrency okay and a crack in market okay they're, they're raising red flags and they're saying that tether is is many being manipulated okay and it manipulates the market okay and, and we'll go through this couple a couple things and then the reason why okay i, I want to show you that there's some uh things should be real showing some red flags into your guys's eyes as well okay so in this little um graph here okay it's a bar graph okay within a span of two minutes on may 7th there was a tight sequence of buy orders with a total volume of 159,487 tether okay that did not move the price i'm sorry dollars that didn't even move the price okay didn't even move it how is that even possible okay so you see this volume of 389 okay remember that number 0.389 so then we come down here and it says a buy order of 37.5 increased it by 0 0.0002, okay? The next buy order was 3, that's 13,076.389, 349 times larger. Nudges the price only 0 0.0001? I mean, w w how did that happen, you know? Okay, remember that 0.389 number, okay? So now, as you can see, we had some sell volumes of 389. 200 okay went up as a buy volume and then nine okay so nine and nine and nine point three eight nine again point three eight nine none of this moved the price and but a buy order of just 75 moved the price of a point zero 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 one okay how does that work how does that how does that happen the only reason that that happens is if they're making new coins just like they're making dollars and they're saying oh well that's a circulating supply as opposed to the maximum supply Okay, great. Your max, they keep, it seems to me like they keep changing the maximum supply. So there is no maximum supply. So they're going to sit there and try to baseline this coin at a dollar. And now you have other companies that are shady coming in and using this against the market. Okay, that, that's really what's happening. I mean, you have um, people out there that are... In, uh, not investors, but the representing investors, okay? So investors give them their money or just people who are, who are speculating and they give them to these people and then these people do something with that money. And if they can find a hole in Tether, they're absolutely going to use it because it's a dollar, it, it's a flatline coin. So that's exactly what they're doing um, is they're using these holes 
and saying that they are are taking advantage of this, um, and and they believe that there's washed. It's it's called wash trading, okay. And that's that's something that is completely banned from regulated markets, um, because of the false impression of market supply and demand. Okay, it's giving a, 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 a it's a it's a false impression. So, you know, Kraken says they're not you know according to us they're not doing anything wrong because they're getting their cut. What do they care? You know, it, it, until the actual regulations come down and say you need to do something about this Kraken. They're not going to do anything about it. They're making their cut, just like everything else. So that's why I hate EOS. That's why I hate Tether. And and really, when it comes down to it, Brock Pierce is behind it all, and, and he started this whole wave of, of corruption, and everybody sees it and goes, oh, look, we can just use the manipulation wave, and they're killing everybody who's smaller than them. They're just killing them, and they really don't care. But that's, that's cutthroat. That's how it works in any market. It's cutthroat. That's why we need more regulation. Um, moving forward into some good stuff, okay? High performance blockchains finally moving up with the rest of the pack. You know, of course, Bitcoin went up, you know, 500, four or 500 bucks, you know, in an hour. So, uh, high performance blockchain is going up. The good thing about high performance blockchain that I'm seeing is the mainnet launch is coming out <coughs> less than a day, 20 hours now that it's got. And uh, I think it's going to make a nice big jump up from there, just based on what a high powered blockchain is all about. You know, they have hardware and software um, that's going to uh, uh, boost them in their TPS transaction per second. And their their goal is a million TPS using this stuff. So um, it, it's it's cool to see. So the key is another one as well. The key is went down uh, dramatically and it's going back up with the rest of the pack. And uh, I bought both of these coins uh, uh, DC8. So I dollar cost average it in. So I'm not that far away from starting to um, uh, get a profit. And they're starting in less than 20 hours as well. So the key testnet is going to be launching and high performance mainnet is going to be launching. So great things to see. So last but not least, fear and greed index, crypto fear and greed index. Yesterday was 20. Today is 16. Well, right now anyways. And, um, you know, we'll see, you know, now that everything's popped up, uh, I believe that tomorrow is going to be uh, extremely different. And it's going to go up in the 20s, obviously and then go from there. So uh, you guys take it with a grain of salt, but uh, we'll see what happens. So my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. You guys have a great night. Keep up the grind.